Are we ready for another exciting episode of Way of the Brush? Technical difficulties aside, of course. <laughs> oh, man. Has the show ended? No, it has not, Sketh. It has not ended. It has not even begun. We're beginning in a moment. So does I, Chris, here after spazzing out at my computer and trying to get this thing to work. For whatever reason, YouTube was just not, ha just did not want me to return today. So we have to do this over on Twitch today, but I will post this on my channel later on for all those who tune in onto my channel for various goodness, I suppose. <laughs> and so I see quite a few in which is good, nice to see, and uh, yeah, I hope everybody had a safe and happy holidays, um, we're into the new year, it seems like last year we saw each other, and uh, yeah, so, uh, we haven't got, I haven't had anything planned for the demo today, because I figured, well, we, we should do a demo today to start the year off right. And so I, yeah, let me know what you guys think for a, a demo today. Was there anything in the quick tips that have been posted like on the vault or in the mini war gaming channel uh, that maybe uh, wasn't entirely clear or maybe you'd like a little bit more clarification as far as what was displayed? So feel free. Uh, I have no moderator in my chat, so please be good. Um. And for those that are watching this on YouTube afterwards, yeah, you're not going to be able to see the chat because, well, I'm doing this on Twitch today. So, I'm still kind of rattled up. <laughs> but I see everybody's here. I see Cody Rue. I see Sketh, the Combat Wombat, Howling Wolf, Clayton Tate, Punisher 1. Who else is here? Dragon Wraith? Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, I have no moderator, so be good. Because, well, nobody can see this stuff. But, I mean, like, I'm not really one for, uh, you know, monitoring, moderating what you guys say. Just, you know, keep it clean, right? <laughs> and, yeah, so, I trust everybody's well. You know, there's lots of new things. Um... Yeah, you know, um, I'm just, just kind of reading this chat here as it flies by. And this is one reason why I wasn't crazy about the chat in Twitch is because it just comes flying by. It, t it goes as fast as you guys can type and I can only read so fast. And yeah, Night Orc, that's Mark Hill. Well, how you doing, Mark Hill? Taking care of that little space marine. I, I trust. Howling Wolf, Chris, what do you think of Drop Zone Commander? Any interest in playing it? I like Drop Zone Commander. I like the look of the models. Um, I haven't had a chance to read the rules. Uh, I think we have the rule books here. But I haven't seen anybody playing it, so I don't know what the deal is. But I know we have models. You know what? I think we sent models out to be commission painted. And I don't think um, the... Models have come back yet. I don't know. I can't be 100% sure on that one. But I like the models. Uh, the the human ones, the ones that, are, that you see on the website that are painted like typically green. The I think they're like USA something or other. And they look really cool. Uh, the other one too, the aliens with the... They look, they look like um, from the movie John Carter. You know how they had like the little feathery wing things going on? I kind of like those ones too. And... Yeah, it's and I like the background for those aliens as well. I don't know if they're aliens or humans or, but they read more like you know kind of a Native American kind of background. Even the um, the uh, the names of the vehicles and stuff and stuff are all kind of Native American kind of inspired. Feels like anyway, and uh, yeah, I I I play it. I I was a big fan 
of Epic. I used to play Space Marine and Titan Legions. And I used to have, like, a, I had a fully painted Imperator Titan. But then, uh, just when I was kind of consolidating my efforts in my hobby and stuff like that, and what I was playing, I wasn't playing a lot of Epic. And so I kind of just got rid of it all. I don't even think I have anything from Epic. I still have some plastic Warlord Titans, I think. Like the ones with the big beetle shells on them. But yeah. Drop Zone Commander, though. I dig it. I like it. Uh, I haven't read the rules. Uh, apparently the rules are pretty pretty good. It is that, um, you know, you move a thing and then activate it. Like, it's like a unit-by-unit unit kind of activation, I believe. I could be wrong. I don't know. I haven't read the rules. But I'm just trying to remember as people kind of described it to me. And yeah. And so let's go back to the chat. Uh, you can put it in slow mode. I could put it in slow mode, the chat, but... You know, bah. Ah, I'll, I'll let the, the chat monkeys run amok. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, demo. Today's demo. Let me know, because I've, like, I've, got, I've got it all set up here today. So, let me know. And emails. I have a few emails. We kind of rushed through the emails in the last episode, but, you know, it was kind of a, a crazy ending to the show anyway, and I just need to pull up a few of them again. So I am going to do that while you get to stare at the side of my head while I try and figure out my emails again, because I shut everything off. I had to restart everything. Um, just YouTube was just not being good to me today. And, yeah, I'm probably still not going to stop bitching about that because I was just really disappointed in how how funny it got. And not ha-ha funny, you know. It was, uh, it was more than disappointing. <laughs> and so let's get to an email. Let's get to... I think I did this one in the last show, but... I will do it again, I believe, because I didn't get through all the pictures he had sent me, and he, I believe he sent me another one. This is Kuchiniwa. Uh, hey, Chris. Huge fan, way of the brush. I found your quick tips in mini wargaming, and I tried experimenting with them all. I like the retarder. Makes blending so much easier. And the brush shop has made... Shop? Yeah, the brush shop has made my brush cleaning monumentally easier. Anyway, I'm sending a few miniatures that I painted at college, and I was hoping you could review them. Sorry if the pictures, if it's a picture overload, but I feel to not look at them all. Whoa. Oh, feel free not to look at them all. <laughs> Reading helps. <clears throat> also, a few quick questions. Where can I find a triple zero brush? I saw someone that said they used it to make a really cool lightning effect, and I don't think any brushes are that fine detail. Also, my friend is just getting into guard. The guard's pictures I sent, I painted for him. And he wants me to try his hand at painting. What are some basic tips you could give him and try and make color scheme easy to achieve? Any tips on doing that chocolate chip camo less daunting? Huh? <laughs> Thanks for looking at my email, Bob. And P.S. I had to use Drop Pod. Send them all. Sorry if I didn't send them correctly. If you want to try sending them again, matters not shared these files. Oh, that's a stupid email thing. <laughs> and so he has sent me a few pictures of his work. And I dig it. Hello, color of the gods. I see you. We're all here. It's, it's okay. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, so little Captain Fist Punch here. For the monk. Oops, he's in behind there. There we go. I dig it. Um, it looks like you may, might be over priming because I, I noticed in a lot of your pictures here, the, the, um, the models kind of have a slight texturing to them. I really like the gold on this, on these guys. Uh, I noticed, uh, I think, another set of models too. 
you have the gold on them and I really like the gold on it and I am kind of curious as to how you did it did you use something like Vallejo gold or was this all Citadel golds but yeah I'm kind of curious as to what you, uh, what gold you did because it's really nice and lustrous and it, maybe it's just the way that it's uh, photographed and the way you painted it but I like the gold on these models and yeah they look really good but like I said uh, it looks like it might be over priming because I noticed like on the sword hilt how it looks really kind of uh, textury and yeah so you got to be careful with that when you're when you're priming and let's have a look at this fella over here and let's zoom up on him I really dig the um, the axe blade on this the lightning is really good it looks like um, you apply the lines and then maybe put a glaze on top of it just a tinted all over overall but I like it the face is nice I like the face but again yeah I can kind of see like a bit of a chalkiness on the model so I I'm, I think you might have over primed but really good I dig it and here's a couple more he had sent me he sent me a whole whack ton of pictures here and I like this uh, imperial fist here but again uh, one thing I do notice is that he does have a slight texturing to him now for a space marine with that slight texture look to it if you're doing it deliberately well then you know very cool because it gives it the model a very gritty appearance but if that wasn't in your if that wasn't your intention then you know yeah it, that looks like a problem of over priming or priming in uh, kind of funny conditions uh, funny being like you know the humidity and then you know these guys I really like here uh, it works really well having that texture on the model like I like the um, the blade on the weapons here how it has that slight texturing and it really picks up the dry brushing but as I have mentioned before like when you're dry brushing that the texture on a model can really be exacerbated um, you know from the priming if you're uh, if you're over priming and here let's look at these space marines here Jeez Louise there we go and yeah like here you know again because the models have been over primed it has that slight texture but for some strange reason I kind of dig how it looks on the models it gives them that gritty appearance right and yeah I like these guys they look really cool I'm just gonna look at them for a bit <laughs> and yeah where am I here and this girl I don't know what she's from. She looks like she's probably from Malifaux. But she's really cool too. Female flesh can be kind of challenging. Especially because, you know, often there's it's got really like soft uh, soft tones. And for any painter really, um, you know, achieving in like, like soft flesh tones but still highlighting because you, you can't really go with the typical highlighting fashion you know for like say for example like a space marines flesh where you have these really strong contrasts on the face and then when you go into a female face you don't really want those hard contrasts and uh yeah no i dig it i like it looks good and it, it doesn't look like you, uh, you over prime this model either it looks like you had just a good amount of priming on it and then here's the one that i really like this thing is cool and i have no idea where this model comes from I have no idea. I'm I'm willing to bet it's like from Reaper or something like that, but I'm probably really wrong about that. Um, but I like this thing. This thing's cool, and um, it's a really good job on it. I like how it's just got all this kind of rusty metallic metal look to them all. It's really cool, and it looks huge. It looks like it stands like. 12 inches tall maybe but yeah that's really cool dude um Kachinawa yeah I I um I, I must you must send me an email on how you're priming that what that gold was and it, it looks like it, maybe it's the same gold here but yeah and you also got to tell me um what the what this dragon is because this is cool or anybody else who knows it what it is in the chat because I have no clue. <laughs> but yeah, that's Kuchiniwa.
That was some of the work he's been doing. So, yep, Kachinawa, if it wasn't your intention to put that texture on those models, watch out for uh, overpriming. Um, or even often when you're spraying just a little too far from the model and the spray kind of turns into like a dust and that can really kind of mess up the uh, texture on your model. But, yeah, keep going. Keep sending me work, uh, everybody out there, you know. Keep sending me emails. What you're working on. What you want to show off, you know. Or, or just general painting questions because, you know, I'd like to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, coffee break. Coffee break. I'm dry. And I'm trying to get through this chat here. And this chat is, like, daunting. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. SJ Wims. Hey, Chris. Happy New Year to you and everybody in the chat. Well, Happy New Year. Oh, excuse me. Um, da -dum 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 -dum. Where are we in this chat? Clayton Tate. The image sharing system works super good. Okay. I am guessing everyone's feed is working. Mine doesn't seem to be loading. Might want to restart that. Because, well, I guess he's not going to hear me if he's not getting a feed, right? <laughs> so, everybody tell him to restart his page. Because I'm going to assume that everybody's viewing me perfectly fine. Maybe not perfectly, but yeah. Cody Rue played one game of Relic. It was fun. Yeah, I haven't tried, I haven't tried um, Relic. I've been meaning to. And... I believe the guys over at Black Knight, they have a copy. And so I've been trying to convince somebody around here to pick up a copy. Because I don't feel like dropping a coin on it. <laughs> but I suppose I should. Because I, I kind of want to paint those pieces up. that come The uh, playing pieces. I kind of want to paint those up. And yeah. Marculus. Do you ever use realistic water effects for blood or water or whatever? Um, I've used the water effects from GW and didn't really care for it. Uh, smells really weird. Uh, for any kind of water effects, uh, we for bases and tables and such and terrain, I've used uh, clear resin. Uh, Envirotex clear resin. It's a good stuff. It's uh, it's a um, laminate for furniture, but it's just, it's just resin and it's clear. But it, you know, it's for putting that nice shine on. Uh, if you just do a quick look up around like hardware stores or online, you can find Envirotex. Um, it comes in two parts. It's a two-part resin. It's a one-to-one -one mix. You just mix it up, pour it nice and even. Uh, there's tricks, ways of getting the bubbles out of it because sometimes when you're mixing it, a lot of bubbles can be introduced. But yeah, I, I don't use uh, the blood uh, water for blood. Uh, if I'm gonna do blood and you know put it onto the model, either I'll paint. The blood and then put a gloss coat over that or just mix the red with the gloss coat and then but often when you mix a, a color into the gloss coat it often kind of dulls the uh, glossiness of it and blood you know looks really cool especially if you want to do fresh blood it looks really cool when it's glossy and it's got that nice shine to it Sketh Chris have you got <laughs> You have some who gotten in, me into Eldar now. Thank you. LOL. Very cool. As you can see behind me here, over here, not this way, this way, over here, um, it's still uh, my battle report. I've played a game last night against Tyranids. <coughs> now he's a, he's a young general of the hive mind and he just got the models and, you know, he wanted to try them out. So I'll be posting another battle report and, Eh, a couple days, maybe Monday, Tuesday. I'm not going to rush it because I just put out a battle report, and I like to, you know, let the the viewership build up on them, and you know, I don't want to burn myself out on, you know, work and then going home and working on stuff. I like to space everything out, you know, just so everything kind of gets its own little uh, run at viewership, and you know, yeah, just yeah. Quirky nine one one painting a rainbow effect. You want to. You want me to show painting a rainbow effect? Okay. <laughs> Cody Roo, like talisman with some of the bogging down portions removed. Oh, okay, cool. So it's a it's a lot faster because some of the things that like with talisman, 
especially if you're not playing aggressive enough. Uh, you end up just kind of circling the board for a while and kind of building your character and your stats up, and then you go fight the dragon, and then, you know, it's way easy, right? And so, yeah. Often that's what ends up happening in Talisman. Everybody just kind of runs around the board, leveling up, and, yeah. Kind of take, and the game can end up taking like six hours to play. And bah. Bah. Brah. Um. Tendian. Hey, Chris. Good. New Year to you, man. Maybe do WOTB on here from now on. Uh, maybe. I still prefer it to YouTube uh, only because um, because I don't have to do anything. Like right now, I'm broadcasting on Twitch. And, you know, I have to take it from Twitch and then bring it over to YouTube. And so, like, right now, the computer is also recording this as well. Basically, there's two copies of this going out. And if I do it on YouTube, I just click the button, record, and then YouTube, you know, uh, saves it and posts it. And, you know, I don't do have to do anything. I just do my show. And, you know, it's less work. <laughs> it's, it's, it's less work. And, you know, who's, who, who's not up for less work? I know a lot of you might like this chat and everything like that, but I kind of like how it, on YouTube it's a comments and, you know, you can't really spam questions and, you know, stuff like that. But that's, you know, that's just me. That's, that's my own personal foibles. <laughs> Howling Wolf. YouTube was acting up, so that's why I twitched now. Yeah, so it, we're only going to do Twitch this time unless, of course, next next week... If YouTube keeps giving me trouble, then yeah, we'll probably do it on Twitch again. I don't know. Um, but yeah, YouTube was being bad today. I can only assume... <laughs> I don't know. Because see, what it, what it was is there's a page and there's this little button. When you first load up the page, you click it to start the stream. And then it compiles the stream. And then it'll tell you you can start streaming. And it was st it goes like a like it's a bl bright blue box, and it'll go a light blue, and it was staying in that light blue, and that's why I assumed it's either a flash problem or maybe YouTube servers. I I have no idea. I don't work for them, so I have no idea. <laughs> oh my gosh, my coffee's gone. Color of the gods. Hello, 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 hello. Everybody saying hello. Hello, can you go? Um, where am I in this chat? Lost again in the chat. Well, I'm not really lost. I'm just kind of scanning through. Everybody's kind of just answering each other. And SJ Wims, hey, Sketh, you have been pretty busy in December, but I should be around more from now on. Okay, cool. Sketh, Laughing Shark. Same here, working on my Eldar army, and there's a large amount of yellow. Only one model done, because I keep messing with the yellow. Yeah, yellow. Yellow's kind of tricky. Just prime and white. I mean, if you really don't want to mess with yellow, get the army painter yellow. The spray yellow. Or, if you have an airbrush, then you're just spraying yellow. All right. Count Dankular. <laughs> kind of name is that? Nope. Oh, well, maybe next week. Have fun, you lovelies. Um, Sketh, SJ Wims, it's okay. This is the first video I've gotten to watch on time this year. Hoping to not miss a single one for the whole year. LOL, Dragon Win. Yeah, the dragon was pretty cool. I like that dragon. Um, Tandian, everybody walk the dinosaur? Okay. Cody Roo, sorry FK for a moment. Good morning, Tayton. Thank you for the compliment. Gorkatron and Morkatron, appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> uh, laughing Shark, troll that's a thing, Chris. How close do you spray? Because I've done that with the spray before, and it's annoying. Uh, well, I don't know if you are a vault member, but I do have a video on priming. If you're not a vault member, then... Just really quick, it's they recommend 12 to 30 centimeters away, and that's really what it is, right? You're just you're you're holding your model, right? Okay, here, I'll I'll, I'll pantomime this out for you guys. 
So here, here's my model, and then here's my spray can. And it's like that, and so what I do is it just two quick little pumps of the spray, turn it 25 degrees, or 90 degrees, I suppose, 90 degrees, right? Turn it one quarter of the way, two little quick blasts, another 90 degrees, quick blast, so on, twice at the top, and then have a look at the underside of the model, see if there's you know anything in there. But again, with the priming, you don't you don't want to over prime. Primer is just you know just something for the paint to grab onto, and yeah. But that's how I normally paint prime. Uh, but lately, I've been priming with the airbrush. I use uh, Vallejo's uh, pr primer for airbrush, mainly because I don't have to go outside and it's winter here, and you know. It's cold, and the cold will mess up your uh, priming. Even if you're in the garage, say your garage is cold, it's not heated, and you're priming in your garage, yeah, you bring your models out there. Say, for example, you bring your models outside into the cold, and you, you prime, and then you bring the models in. Well, when your models were in the cold, they're contracting. You spray your primer on, and even if it's wet or it's starting to dry, you bring the models inside, the heat gets to the models, and all of a sudden the paint begins to crack. And often, if you've ever had that cracking happening on your models, that's that's what that's from. It's from spraying outside in the cold, bringing the models right in, right away. And, yeah, so. Um, Sketh one, same, LOL, along with the finished painting, everything before I buy another kit. Some many over the holidays doesn't help that the Tyrants are coming out this month and guards soon too. Yeah, Tyrants, 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 Tyrants. Everybody's talking Tyrants. I suppose we can talk about Tyrants. I'll probably end up having to paint one or two of them. I don't know, because I, lately I've had quite a few models. Like I was painting up a uh, little Tyrant Gaunts, so I don't know if that will satisfy people as far as you know inspiration goes. And I, Clayton, I, I will get your email today. Because he Clayton had sent me uh, a couple pictures for iridescent um, bugs and stuff for like you know getting that finish. So I wasn't sure if you were just sending that as reference because I've seen a lot of people in the video sections were talking about getting that iridescent look on the on the bugs. And so I'm not sure if that's why you had sent that email to me or if you're asking how I would do that. I don't know, but anyway, we'll we'll get to it though. <laughs> Tandian, hey Chris, enjoy your coffee. Is Vallejo model color less glossy than game color, or is it just me? Uh, the model color, yeah, it does seem to have a, a slight gloss to it. Uh, but I think that's because the colors are a little bit more vibrant versus um, the model color. But uh, the, like the game color, sorry, the game color being glossier than model game color because they're designed to match GW's color range at the time and yeah so I don't know uh where am I in this chat Scott that was two SJMs by the way SJM whoa I don't know what the heck I'm reading there laughing shark troll Chris didn't answer my question yet but I'm about to BRB I'm about to BRB you're about to be right back <laughs> I don't know I don't know what he, I don't know what he's talking about. The models for Relic look pretty sick. Sick, like mad wicked dope sick. <laughs> yeah, they do. I like the little, the little busts. And they're actually pretty big. I was kind of surprised, like, how, how big they are. Considering, like, Talisman, the models are so small. But it's better, because, like, the old version when GW was producing Talisman, they were just, like, regular Warhammer models that they threw into the box. They were the plastic models. And then when uh, Fantasy or Fantasy Flight uh, started producing the game, the models got smaller, which I actually liked because it was a little easier to have all these guys on the board versus when there were big GW models. Like I had an ogre, and he was like bigger than the squares that he was supposed to occupy. And yeah, so um, dum 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 dum. Mark Illis, Mark Illis, Mark Illis. Got to play Kill Team last night. Three games with different lists each time was super fun. Haven't played Kill Team yet. I mean, from what I understand, it didn't change that much. 
from what I understand, which is not much. Cody Roo, who here has played Super Dungeon Explorer. I got the starter for my daughter, and the figures are amazing. I've seen that set. Uh, I haven't played it. I haven't seen the the box set personally. I've only seen videos of it. It does. It, like you know, they're they're cute little models, and yeah, I said they were cute. <laughs> the Combat Wombat Vid Feed just glitched. Odd. There's a glitch in the matrix. Somebody didn't take the blue pill. No, the red pill. Wait. <laughs> Color of the gods, damn it, just been throwing a wobbly. That's got to be one of those English terms. <laughs> First time using Twitch and finally got into the chat properly. Oh, okay. <laughs> just been throwing a wobbly? What does that mean, Gus? Been throwing a wobbly. <laughs> like I said, that's got to be one of those English English terms. Sketh, well then, welcome, color of the gods, to the proper chat, the better chat. Well, see that now, Sketh, that's that's like your opinion, man, because I get lost in the chat, and when the chat monkeys, you know, go on a rampage, you know, you need a moderator. But see, everybody here is pretty, you know, pretty cool, right? Everybody's pretty level here. We don't attract a lot of the too many monkeys, and uh, oh, you know what? Jeez. Pony Pledge, where's Pony Pledge? I wonder if he even has Twitch. I don't even know if he's watched on Twitch. Is Pony Pledge here? I don't know. I forgot, we can't get the show started without Pony Pledge. Look at that, I'm already, I don't even know, half hour into the show maybe? Anyway, <laughs> where are, where is Pony Pledge? Um, Tandian, welcome to Wobbly Land. Yeah, Wobbly. Just being thrown a Wobbly. I don't <laughs> Is that like Wobbly Pop? The Combat Wombat. You're here. Welcome, Cog. Oh, Color of the Gods. <laughs> All these little acronyms and chat things. Oh, man. Punisher 1. Anyone working on models while watching Chris? Yeah, you guys better be painting something because, man, I hate to think I'm just kind of wasting my time here. You guys are supposed to be painting. Get to work. I'm working on Butcher 3 at the moment. And he's got a little link on me. Linky. I don't want to click it because I don't want to mess my stuff up. Let's see. Ooh. You know what? Let's bring this over here. Let's let's show off what he's doing here. Um, you know what? Let me. Oh, hell with it. No, I'm just kidding. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. There we go. And here we go. So that's what he's working on. Punisher 1. Looks good. I like the red. Now, it looks like you primed in um, black. Now, do you prefer that? Or is that just kind of like what you just kind of do? Like, is that your workflow? Because if you want like a nice bright red, I mean, like, don't get me wrong here. The contrast on it is really nice. And, you know, it, it really works. But if you were looking for like bright red, right? Because I imagine you probably have to put a few coats down to get that red. And yeah, because you could just as easily prime them white and still get that, you know, same kind of tone and same kind of feeling. Feelings. I like it though. That's what you're working on. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, man. You like how fast I did that? I just post something and... Yeah. It's, what an age we live in. <laughs> Death Grant's Wings. Working on my ghost arc. Very cool. What you working on? Your ghost arc? Color of the gods, proper chat. What chat was I in before? The pits. <laughs> Combat Wombat, I'm waiting on a primer to dry for my Steelhead Calf. Steelhead Calf are the best calf. They're not the, well, no, they're probably the best. But just because, like, right off the hop, right, they get, like, four attacks on people, ideally. The only thing that's a drawback for them is, like, to be really awesome and on par with, like, with other 
factions have. They need the halberdiers just so they get the flank. But if you do pull off flank with the halberdiers and cav, oh yeah, steelhead cavalry is awesome. Awesome. Color of the gods. Anyway, hi Chris. Hi Gus. Sketh one. Nope, my workbench. My workbench. My workbench is gone. Tell I clean out the garage and set up airbrush system. A lot to do. Wish I could work on them. <laughs> I don't even know if that's how you saw it, Sketh, but. <laughs> Color of the gods, how have you been, man? I have been well. Uh, the holidays are taking their toll, and I'm ready to kind of get back into serious work again. Uh, throughout the holidays, I was periodically coming in for work, and yeah, it's kind of hard when nobody's here. It's really hard to stay motivated. <laughs> Family of gamers, what's up, y'all? Sup, Chris? Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year, Family of gamers. I see you guys had a little page. I liked it on Facebook and joined and. I like the little graphic you guys have for your um, for your family of gamers thing. I like that. Uh, the only thing is, though, uh, for you, Coach, I think like your picture of you uh, it needs to be a little bit um, like better contrast. So because you kind of like at a distance, you kind of get lost in the picture. We can see the other uh, your kids, but you know, you're kind of like not very contrasty, not very defined within the picture. But otherwise, I like it. Um, I was actually toying with the idea the ki because the wife and kids were here like a few days ago while I was in here working and they were toying around with the idea of playing a game and I was thinking of doing it live uh, having a game a talisman kind of family gaming time just for giggles you know with my wife my son and my daughter because my daughter will play talisman uh, usually she likes playing Monopoly because you know she's a girl and she likes mon money and uh, <laughs> All the girls out there are probably getting mad at me. So anyway, <laughs> just send your hate mail to chris at miniwargaming.com. <laughs> and so, yeah, we usually play Monopoly as a family, but sometimes, you know, uh, we play Talisman. Uh, I've been meaning to pick up Relic, you know, because Alex, my son, he likes 40K and stuff like that. And yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, all the girls are probably just, what the hell is he talking about? Laughing shark troll a little. Sorry, Skit, just saw your message. And yeah, yellow and red don't work for me. It's always not thick enough, so I end up having to paint a bit. And then wait for it to dry and then do another coat. Are you are your LR all yellow or just spots on them? Yeah, if you're going with bright colors, prime white. Prime white. Prime white. Prime white. Or short of that, prime a light gray. If you want your colors to be nice and bright, don't go black. Because then you got yeah you got to build up too many layers. You go white, you can build those colors up really fast, really easily, and they'll stay nice and bright. Sketh, keep forgetting to add the name of who I'm replying to. Last one for Punisher one, lol. Board for life eighty eight. What did I miss? You did not miss a thing because I have been sitting here rambling on, reading this chat, going through emails, having a couple laughs, I suppose, but otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> Sketh one, Chris. I hope you read this fully. Bacon, bubble gum, the mustard and fruit. Wonder how long it will wake you to laugh while reading this out loud. Takes. <laughs> I almost finished it without laughing. I should have read it seriously. I couldn't. <laughs> Bacon, bubble gum with mustard and fruit. And wonder how long it will <laughs> wake you to. Oh, because you said wake takes. <laughs> Bacon, bubble gum with mustard and fruit. Bacon bubblegum. Bacon bubblegum. That's not kind of fun to say. Bacon bubblegum. Bacon bubblegum. Your death grants wings. Ha ha ha. Sketh, you're a sneaky one. Ha ha ha. Sketh, you're sneaky. Cody Roo, Chris. Would it be reasonable to say that one of the draws to play LR, especially Jetplex, is that it is very strategic. You pick the fight and, like a surgeon, not a sturgeon, excise the enemy, a rapier rather than a club. Yes, I would say that, Cody. That That's why I prefer. But, I mean, I've played, you know, Eldar on foot, uh, you know, Mech Eldar. And, you know, that's the one thing I really like about Eldar is Eldar can play uh, to many different kind of strengths, right? You can play Eldar as hordes. You can play Eldar as elite 
you know you can play it on foot you can play it high mobility high firepower you know there's many different ways to play eldar and eldar is is always you know in in my mind eldar has always been one of those um for the elite kind of general not that i consider myself an elite general but i do consider myself a very experienced general also basic knowledge of tactics and you know busting out your sun Tzu and you know stuff like that right but yeah th th with the jet bikes i do prefer playing with my jet bikes as uh the high mobility the only thing uh that is a drawback when playing jet bikes but i mean with that high mobility you have to have some sort of downside but just so that you know they're not overpowered but is that short range because with the shuriken catapults right they only have a 12 inch range and the cannons are only 24 inch range and yeah so you have to have some drawbacks there but excuse me but um yeah that's why i and that's why like throughout the years uh when i've played i've played as orcs i've played chaos played tyranids uh played lr played space marines i used to play blood angels but blood angels was before like any of their funny rules it was uh back in like rogue trader i, I had sp big space marine army uh chaos was my second largest army uh at the time i had a huge army but a lot of my models were still first edition uh space marines so like i had a whole bunch of the plastic mark six models back when like 20 bucks got you 30 marines in plastic now you know people like 30 marines for 20 bucks that's that you know <clears throat> back when the blister packs uh my aspect warriors used to get five in a blister pack and they were you know lead and then they sw made quickly made that switch to pewter but yeah like i still have like my great unclean one model it's 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 still from like uh, the rogue trader and it's it's lead and he's heavy you can kill somebody with him <laughs> but yeah i'm i'm more of a uh, rapier kind of guy than a club kind of guy um i just find the club approach just kind of you don't really think about it right it's it's kind of like uh imperial guard tank army where you just march up with your lehman russes and all your tanks and you just kind of and you know you bulldoze through and i'm not like that i'm more of a i'm more of a sniper kind of a one shot one kill kind of guy maybe it's the hunter aspect of of me but yeah sketh one swings always sketh one swings just anybody who's looking i guess fade in kin hi chris hi fadey fade kin fade kin fade kin and and fade kin you spelled my name wrong so, you know what? Just for giggles, I should kick him out of the chat. <laughs> Just kick him out of the chat for spelling my name wrong. <laughs> Pretty harsh rules around here. Tough crowd, tough crowd. Scath one swings. I'm a mad scientist by Dave Reckoning, so I have to keep up the act. LOL. Are you a mad scientist, Scath? Really? That's kind of cool. Combat wombat. So much candy. Scath one Dave's wombat. Can I have some? Got none for Halloween. Wow. We're a long ways out from Halloween. Chris, you spray models with travel mugs? What have I been missing? <laughs> Color of the gods, Chris, I wanted to ask you, do you feel that the space elves, Eldar, are one of the more pure races in 40k? What I mean is, since Rogue Trader days... They have remained virtually unchanged in terms of background and look. Yes, I would agree. And uh, to Jess Goodwin's credit, he really kind of just, he nailed it on the design of Eldar, the look of Eldar, the feeling of Eldar. And I don't know if he had anything to do with the way they play, like as far as like what writing the rules for them. I don't think so. I think, I think that was Andy Chambers who first kind of laid that out. But yeah, with Eldar like virtually zero change from their rules and they're even the profiles are really kind of you know has stayed quite the same other than you know the overall mechanics of, the, of each of these editions where they change stuff up and you know but yeah eldar eldar uh really it, just the design aesthetic you know it, it's it's a win you know the look has not changed since they first brought them out you know, like when they when they made that quick little change, what was it in third, the end of third edition or fourth edition? Fourth edition, no, it was third edition. 
Yeah, it was third edition when they they brought out some resculpts of like the fire dragons, uh, the banshees, uh, somebody else. There was a couple other things that they kind of redesigned the sculpts. And in my books, well, like the fire dragons were the worst, were the worst of those resculpts. The banshees, not so much. The banshees you could kind of work with. You know, I still have a unit of them. But, uh, and that's why when they resculpted, when they brought uh, the fourth edition book out, they they had done re, redone the banshees and the scorpions to look back like their first edition uh, sculpts. And yeah, like like really a credit to Jess Goodwin because I mean he he just nailed it, and you know it's it's really kind of surprising that. Eldar are not more popular in in 40k uh, just because of that consistency in the models and in their rules and in the way they play. Like Eldar really have played very much the same way, you know, since their inception. And again, it's you know really it's it's really good because even Space Marines have changed from first edition to second edition. When fra- uh, when face marines when space marines first came out they were toughness three, and then they they changed it they changed them to toughness four, and so even that you know was a, a major change from when space marines first came out. So, bit of history for there for some of you who didn't know. <laughs> Combat wombat tosses milk duds at the screen. <laughs> okay, toss them now, toss me one, go long. Um, SJ Wim, SJ Wim. I've I've been saying it SJ Wim, but am I? Should I just say it? Swim, Swim, is the J silent? I don't know. LOL Sketh, Sketh, SJ Wim. You are welcome. LOL Wombat. Thanks for the candies. Mark Ilias 08. Mark Ilias. That sounds like Roman. Mark Ilias. For those who have. <laughs> Can't even do it. For those who like the convenience of a spray can primer, try Rust Oleum. Oleum? Rust Oleum? Painter's Touch. It goes on super thin and evenly. Never had an issue while using it and have done it over 7K points primed with it. Well, yeah. No, I haven't I haven't tried that. And, you know, a lot of people will swear by um, uh, Krylon, Krylon Primer. You know, people will swear by that one. You know, to each his own, right? I mean, first when I when I was still doing spray primers, I I still prefer GW's white and black for priming. Uh, Army painters black and white, not a huge fan of. Their colors, their colors are great because you know you're you're gonna spray that color down and you know you're just gonna kind of run with it, right? But when I'm when I'm spraying white, you know I want a good consistency and GW white is just, you know, tops in that regards. Um, when I used to spray some black uh, for primer, I used to also use uh, Tester's Flat Black. And that used to work really well as a primer as well. Just because it would it would have a slight texture to it because it's flat. But yeah. Um, beta Death. Nids are getting a new codex. Yes, they are. Dragon Wraith. It's out today. Yes, it's pre-order today, though, isn't it? Cl- uh, Tate and Clayton. <laughs> that name always messed me up. As reference, yeah. Oh, okay. Right, to the email. Gotcha. Beta Death. Awesome. Where my orc one? Where's my orc one? I don't know. Sketch Dragon Wraith. Thought it was just pre-orders. Yes, Dragon Wraith. It is. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of skip through some of these here. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just going to be reading out your conversations. Uh, Color of the Gods. Ha ha ha. The new Tyranid Flyer. It looks like a bumblebee with little wings. Puff ha 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 ha. <laughs> you got to do... <laughs> Gus, you got to do a recording of you... Oh, jeez. Of you making that sound. Just, just sit there for a moment. Okay, Gus, just record yourself. Just sitting there for a moment. And then make that sound. And then as straight man as you can, and then just end it, and then post that, and I'll bet you you get a hundred thousand views on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Laughing Shark, I too just read your message. Way too late, my elder have small and large bits. Panels on my hover tanks, and so far planning on just knee pads being yellow. Okay. Man, I'm way behind on this chat, aren't I? <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to run through some of it because some of the guys are whawing in here. I don't know what the hell's going on. Laughing Shark, Trollolo. Oh, yeah, I saw the new Tyranids on the GW page. They don't look that fun. Well, you know, it's Tyranids is acquired taste, right? Acquired taste? Like, you taste like chicken. 60 Needles. Hey, Chris. Vivengeta. Here. Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year to you. Did you assemble the Dreadball teams you painted? Are the models any good? The models aren't bad. Uh, it... I didn't, like, I don't really care for the kind of in, uh, they kind of look like injection resin. They're kind of like uh, privateer presses, plastic. They call it plastic, right? Okay. <laughs> Here we go, start of rant. They call it plastic, but it's really resin. Now, resin, yes, technically is a plastic, but it's not like injection plastic. It's not like uh, where model kits, you know, where you get your, you know, World War II planes or your Star Trek models or what have you, right? And you put the model kit together. That's injection mold plastic. It's often a PVC plastic or something else like that, right? GW is an injection mold plastic, right? They, it's a, like, um, it's a bunch of little plastic beads thrown into this little oven, heats it up. They have these uh, aluminum molds. They stick it underneath the thing and then they <laughs> injection mold and, and plastic and everything like that, right? Whereas with the resin, it's a two-part uh, system. They mix it, and then they inject it into the mold or use centrifuge or whatever, right? And it's really a pain to clean. And just like privateer models, the uh, dreadball plastic models, when you're cleaning them and cleaning the edges off, they have this, this, this uh, thing where, like, the little fibers come off the model. And... I, I, I don't care for that when I'm cleaning because I don't like all these little fibers and stuff like that. Whereas when you're cleaning like a proper plastic model and you're shaving it down and stuff like that, it comes off like in nice big shaves. I don't know what the, what's that word I'm looking for? Like the, the chunks coming off of it. And yeah, it doesn't do that. It, resin doesn't do that. And it just, uh, it's annoying. 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 Um... Beta Death, any tips on painting a Nurgle Rhino? Paint it green. Paint it with a brush. <laughs> um, painting Nurgle Rhino? Uh, well, often whenever I see Nurgle Rhinos, Nurgle vehicles, or Nurgle models for that matter, uh, often it's a bit of green stuff, just to have like the pustules and things like that. Um, I'm just trying to think of some easy things here. <clears throat> I've seen... Uh, a tutorial out there at one point where somebody was taking um, like little plastic balls uh, like really small and they have to be plastic or resin or you can make them like little balls out of green stuff but then you just cut them in half glue them onto the surface take a bit of green stuff and you create that kind of you know how like um, like Typhus's backpack you know, it has those balls and then like it, the armor kind of creeps up and it's like you know the pustule is kind of broken through and they're creating that with the green stuff and with Nurgle, yeah, you know, you you might want to create some texture like that. But as far as painting, you know, you paint it greens and really it's what kind of Nurgle do you want? Do you want dripping ooze? Do you want, you know, really corroded? It's, you know, Nurgle's a lot of fun to paint because you can try a lot of different techniques as far as, you know, what kind of look you're going to go for, right? Because you can even get away with just painting them just flat out green. And painting the details, paint a little fly on the door and, you know, you're done. Or you can paint, like, the ooze running down the side of the armor. And, you know, you can either create it like an actual ooze or you can just paint it like, you know. Or you paint the tank like normal. And then you just have rust and everything all over the place and battle chips. And, you know, it's really corroded and broken looking. And, yeah, so it, it is really tough. It's really kind of just what you're looking to do. Um, you know, what skill level you're kind of comfortable with uh, on achieving uh, i have been meaning to do some kind of nurgle s type stuff for quick tips but yeah so it's it's really up to you i, I 
unless there's something specific you're really kind of looking to achieve uh yeah nurgle's a lot of fun to paint have fun with it though <laughs> nurgle rhino i don't know poon guy 11 chris please twist twistle <laughs> twistle your mustache you spelled my, no actually i shouldn't do that because you spelled my name wrong Mark Ilias, 08. I'm oxidizing two tax squads and a stern guard squad for my minotaurs. Very cool. Yeah, hopefully you guys are working on stuff. Laughing Shark Trollolololol Beta Death. Question? Tandian, throw a jar of jello on it and let it sit in the garage for two months. Oh, for the Nurgle. <laughs> Nurgle Rhino. Ha 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 ha. Beta Death and Nurgle is the god of plagues and disease, and the rhino is a transport tank. <laughs> wow. Okay. SJ Wham. Oh, I guess I'll use the orc's favorite tactic, Sketh. We legs it good and proper. Proper. How far do you want to nuggle? Nuggle it? <laughs> How far do you want to nuggle it? <laughs> oh, we're going to nuggle it. Um, beta death, I want to scare people when they see it. So then you want slimy and pustules and yeah, it really kind of begins at, at, at the construction of the tank, you know, breaking up edges and battle damage, things like that. And then, you know, the little sculpty bits on it and pustules and that kind of stuff. Right. Again, Nurgle, you can take it to all sorts of extremes. All sorts. And it'll work. You know? Yeah. Buy, you could buy some of that uh, plastic fake vomit and glue it onto the tank. <laughs> That's really gross. <laughs> Cody Rue, I like the Super Dungeon Explorer models. I just wish they weren't resin. It is a mess to clean up. That's what I'm marking on during this show. Yo, those those models are resin. Aww, I mean, like it's it's kind of yeah. Working with that resin is kind of a pain, but what are you gonna do, right? Unless we work out some way to to perfect cleaning that kind of resin, because yeah, and they call it plastic, but it's resin. It's resin. It's resin. Laughing shark trollololo. Okay, get some snot and cover it in snot. Ha 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 ha. Sketh, beta death. Well, there are a few videos on Nurgle Train and some units on Mini Wargaming from Austin. Some might be in the vault, though. Yeah, Austin did a train piece, Nurgle. And it was very cool. We have it here, actually, somewhere. I don't know where, but yeah, it's here. It's It, it, it looks really good. And the video is pretty darn good, too. Um, let's get to an email because I could sit here just reading a chat all day long. And... Yeah, so like, and nobody has, you know, spoken up about a, uh, you know, a demo today. I guess you don't really want a demo. <laughs> this is from Blake Dawson. One, named character. Oh, he was showing, yeah, he, yeah he's showing me his Yu Jing work in progress. First one is uh, named character Shinibu Kitsun. Basically done. A JSA starter with a heavy gear coyote I magnetized for a friend in the background. Very cool. And a Domaro also from the JSA starter. And this is his pictures. Nope, that's the dragon again. There we go. So here's the first two that he sent in. And so the first one, I dig. I like it. It's almost done. What more could you need to do? I mean, maybe just a bit of contrast in the hair, I think. Maybe. Maybe just a little splash of a shade in there. And the other fella on the right. He looks like he's got like a bad back or he's got MS or something. I don't know. The way he's kind of standing there. I think that's the way he's standing. But very cool. And it looks like he got some OSL going on on the uh, eyeballs. And it looks like maybe that belt buckle as well. Very cool. These are work in progresses. So I think, um, I think they look really good so far I'm not sure um, if you're really looking for any kind of input other than maybe that model on the left the uh, what is she Shin Shinobu Shinobu kids I don't know I'm, I'm done trying to pronounce names and stuff 
<laughs> but yeah, maybe a bit of um, like a shade in that hair. Just very slightly, not heavy, you know, just to pick out the, the recesses in the hair. Unless you wanted that bright white, then which of course, you know, don't listen to me. Um, but yeah, no, I dig it. I digs it. And then here's the other picture he sent in. And here's a whole bunch of dudes. And now I'm going to ask, are you, you're not putting them to the base and you're pinning them and you have them in the foam because you're airbrushing, right? That's what you're doing. You're airbrushing these guys. Yeah. And what is that thing in the background? A Heavy Gear Coyote. Very cool. I haven't played Heavy Gear, but I know, like, I know, yeah, you're, you're, you're pretty heavy into the Heavy Gear. And are you going to be painting for everybody? Or is it just magnetized? What does it got to be magnetized? The little legs? Jeez, does this thing, is this thing like a robot? Does it stand up? <laughs> That'd be very cool. <laughs> very, 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 very cool. So I dig it, Blake. I dig it. Keep going. Keep painting. Keep sending me those emails. And then, of course, this goes for everybody as usual. Chris at miniwargaming.com. Questions? Pictures? What have you? You want to show off some drawings. You want to show off your painting. Maybe you worked on a conversion. Maybe you want some input. Hey, I'm here, I'm here for you guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm here for you. <laughs> uh, let's go back to the chat Where am I in this chat? I don't know I am so lost This is why I don't go on Twitch Because the chat, I get buried in chat <laughs> And the thing is too, with the chat um, You know, you uh, For anybody who's watching this after it's been live And you know, and I'm going to post this on on YouTube. You don't get to see the chat. Once the chat's done, the chat's gone. Chat's gone, you know. And sometimes there's some really funny conversations going on in here. And it's, you know, it's, it's not recorded. Whereas on YouTube, at least it's like a comments. And it's kind of like a chat. And, you know, it's kind of like uh, a transcript of the chat that was, you know. It, it, for anybody watching After Fact, it kind of gives them a bit of context as to what I'm kind of rambling on about. And, yeah. Unless, of course, there was a way to save this chat, but I have no idea, and I'm not going to start looking right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just going to say, I'm going to start right here. 60 Needles, I have a mini on the table now, and it has a Warhammer, and it is S-shaped. Huh? <laughs> what? Board for Life, LOL. SJ Wims, LOL, M. Chris. I don't know. I don't know what you guys are laughing at. I'm not funny. I don't sit here telling jokes. <laughs> We're supposed to be serious about our painting. We're supposed to be serious. Stern faces. Harumph. Harumph. <laughs> that guy didn't give me harumph. <laughs> uh, the combat wombat just found some gummy crabby patties. Yum. Gummy. Gummy crabby patty. What the heck is a grummy cat? Gummy. Oh, I can't even say it. Uh oh, most start stopping stopping work. Laughing shark troll. -la -la -la. Hmm. I always wondered if you prime white, surely you miss all the shading techniques and the cool black indents in armor and other things which you can get when priming black. Now, yes, yes, you do have to deliberately put your shades in there when you prime white. But for some of us control freaks, we like doing that. We like being able to control where the shadows fall. And yeah, when you prime black and you say you do have an airbrush, you know, getting that zen uh, zenithal style uh, highlighting, very easy, right? You just prime the model black and then you just kind of come from the top. You hit it with a light gray kind of at like, uh, it's like a 30 degree angle from the top dead center of the model. 30 degree angle and it's a light gray and you just come in and then after that, then you come in with some white and you do it almost like right from the top and it's, it creates this almost, not perfect, but very zenithal style highlighting and it's very easy to do and, you know, airbrushing and creating zenithal style highlighting, super easy, super easy versus priming in white and create, you have, you have to create all those shadows. It's a lot more work <coughs> sometimes 
depending on wh how deep you're going with your shadows and how much contrast you're creating. But it allows you so much more control because, you know, for example, say a red cloak and using green to shade, you know, it's easy to do. Whereas if you're doing, if you primed it in black and putting the red on and you want like a nice bright red, then you got to build up a bunch of layers on top of it. And then you can shade with the green and then the black is lost anyways. So yeah, it all depends on what you're doing. It all depends how fast you want to get your models painted, how fast, you know, just how fast you want your stuff done, right? <laughs> yeah. So. Laughing Shark. -la 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 -la. Yeah. Quirky911. Chris, tell Owen his scorn are dumb and pink on black is a terrible idea. Okay, Quirky. Sketh. Quirky911. Pink is only for pink blood angels. Joking, by the way. But I will do it. Okay. Cody Rude, Naxar, what is your base coat and how are you highlighting? Wow, who's Naxar? I must have missed somebody. Oops. Um, Mark and 71. Hey, Chris, putting on the wraps on the looted Valkyrie Dakajet for my son. What's the best red primer out there? Um, well, Army Painter has two of them that are pretty darn good. I've used both on my Eldar and other projects. Uh, I do like the Dragon Red the best, as that one's really good for bl for Blood Angels. It's a looted Valkyrie Dakajet. Now, yeah, the, it's called Red Dragon. It ma it color matches really well with Mephiston Red. So if you're a big fan of Mephiston Red, as far as creating like you know your red on your vehicles and stuff like that, then yeah, that's the way I would go. Army Painter Dragon Red. It's a it's a good match for uh, Mephiston Red. Go that route. Otherwise, go with pure red. But pure red, uh, especially if you're priming it right on top of the gray of a pl plastic model, you kind of have to go, you ha kind of have to over prime to get a decent red. And again, like I'm not a big fan of over priming because you end up with the texture a lot of times. And yeah, so. Oh, wait, I shouldn't have answered your question. You spelled my name wrong. And I should kick you out. <laughs> Uh, the apathetic fish. Hey there, what's happening? Here's an idea I want to do. Vampire counts crypt horrors as chaos co corn spawns. Wow, say that ten times fast. No conversion needed, just painting as corn demons. They will be slightly cheaper, and I'm not a fan of spawn kit. Thoughts? The crypt horrors. Yeah, they would work, because they look like spawn. Yeah. Why not, right? Um... They're slightly cheaper. Uh, otherwise, yeah. I don't see any reason why not. Otherwise, yeah. Because, I mean, like, you, if you were to play a game with them, and everybody goes, oh, those are cryptors. So, no, they're chaos demons. And then, you know, just tell them, yeah, hey, it's proxy, man. Are we playing for fun or are we playing for money here? Like, is this cash on the game? I don't know, you know. Family of Gamers, Chris, I have enjoyed watching you and enjoy all your vids and tips. I really appreciate the likes and views of our craziness. Thanks, brother. Coach and crew. Yeah, man. Get the family involved. I think I will. I will take a page from Coach and have a video. Maybe every once in a while I'll do a family game night. And we'll kind of like how we do with the gaming with Cooler, kind of like, a, you know, the board game. You know, I think we'll do something like that. It would probably be something like Talisman, just so that we keep within our own kind of war gamingness. But, uh, yeah, and I'm sure you guys would get a kick out of, well, my son. The only thing is, though, is us and the family, we, we, uh, we're very open language. <laughs> Is the best way I could say it. So it, it'll it'll probably it's like it'll as long as YouTube doesn't screw with me again, it'll most likely be a, like a YouTube uh, live show, and yeah, but yeah, definitely, definitely. I it, it was probably going to happen like this week. I think it was I think it was New Year's Eve. Yeah, New Year's Eve. I was in the office and I was working on stuff, and they were bored because the wife was off and the kids are off and. You know, it gets them off the Xbox, too, because, man, damn kids in their Xbox, kids in their rock and roll. <laughs>
Um, laughing shark, trollalol, no tau, no tau, skeff, no tau, no fish, please. Oh, tau, hearty, chaos. I'm just reading these comments as people are typing them. <laughs> Inte integral, integral 069. I'm getting back into 40k after 20 years since I last played Rogue Trader Days. Anyone got some suggestions for must haves in my army? Well, what army? <laughs> what army, man? What army? Laughing shock, troll. I don't even know I had it. Okay. Color of the gods. LOL. Unclean one in a sock. Very deadly. <laughs> yeah. Because he also had those uh, little sp spiky parts on top of his head. And then, you know, he has like deadly. The, the model was deadly. Deadly. But it looks so cute compared to like the newer one where he's kind of, you know, he's just. I don't know where I'm going with that, but anyway. Integral 69, building for current rules being cutting and carving to get some old models up to date. So you're probably doing a lot of stripping, right? Haha, <laughs> you're doing a lot of stripping. Skath 1, Integral, what army do you play? Yeah, I just asked that. Laughing Shark, Trollolo, the ap apathetic fish. That's a good idea. Vampire Count, Crypt Horrors would look rad. Integral, oh, 69 Blood Angels, but painting with darker colors, like when Terracotta was the base color. <laughs> yeah, from the old guides, Blood Angels, yeah, they, they, the base color was more of a Terracotta and built up to orange. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't paint them like that no more, eh? Um, but yeah, if, as far as stripping them, uh, and you're going to do, like, a, if you had, like, a big army, I don't know if you got a huge army, but pick yourself up some army painter, um, Dragon Red, because it's a good match for Mephiston Red. Uh, I know, like, a, I don't know a lot of people start off with Mephiston Red as far as Blood Angels go, but it's a nice deep red to build off of. And if you haven't been uh, in the hobby in a while, then yeah, you might be a little rusty. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? Send me pics of what you're working on, bud, because yeah, I'd like to see. You got, man, you must have like a crap ton of old models and. I'd like to see pictures if you can. Send me pictures because sometimes I get nostalgic. <laughs> uh, Sketh, Chris, it was 7th edition. Wait, never mind. Laughing Shark, Trollolol, Eldarception. Huh? <laughs> Integral 69 built a cool modded rhino with a boy racer. With a boy racer twist customization was never easy when I first started. Huh? <laughs> With a boy racer twist. I don't get it. Integral. Can't help. Can't help in on Blood Angels exclusive units, but is a Space Marine Army, which is my bread and butter. Preds are fun, even basic ones. And you have those dropped out Dreadnought combos, Furioso, but Assault Squads and Mass is hoped I'd play Blood Angels. <laughs> Or how I play, I think. I think that's what he was trying to type in there. Uh, laughing Shark, Trollolol, Milk Duds. I want to try some there on a Big Bang Theory. Are they nice? Yes, they're very good. They're mellow taste, a little chocolate. And what's in the center? White chocolate? But they're very mellow tasting candy. They're not very overly sweet. You know, they're kind of like um, like Raisinets. You know, they're like yay big. Sketh one, Mike and Ikes, please. I miss Mike and Ikes. I don't see Mike and Ikes around no more. It's like the shh sound, but I don't mind. Schwim? 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 Wow, how far back am I in this chat? Because <laughs> now old Markan, Markan is talking about Krylon. I must be way behind in this chat. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Okay, I'm jumping ahead. Jumping ahead. Hey, Chris. Combat Wombat. We'll be having any special guests coming in today? No, uh, because Owen is in Hamilton. He's, I believe, playing um, games or something. I don't know. I think it was a tournament or something. I don't know. And Mr. J, I haven't seen Jay since the holidays started, so I don't know where he's at. Um, and no Dave or Matt because the holidays. Taking a break. Everybody should be back Monday. 
and I say should, but you never know, right? <laughs> you never know, they might have skipped town for all I know. <laughs> Everybody's got their passports in their hands getting on a plane for Aruba or something along those lines. Punisher 1, in reference to your PP Plastic rant, Chris, PP Plastic is made of PVC. I wouldn't believe it. Because it's too firm. PVC plastic, like Reaper stuff, is very really soft. And model kits that are really soft. GW plastic is polystyrene. That's it. Polystyrene. Two different things. Right. PVC. Now, see, I, I wouldn't believe it's PVC. Because, like, Reaper bones, that's a PVC plastic. And it's really white. And it's really soft. And model kits, like planes and stuff like that, that are made from PVC plastic. It's, you know, got some softness to it. And the Mantic plastic and the Privateer Press plastic, that resin... It's really, really hard. It's it's almost brittle to to that point. So I I'm not disagreeing with you, but I'm not convinced. <laughs> um, Hammer T10. If you have been handling your models and getting finger oils on it, would you use? <laughs> what do you use to clean them off? Can you use a uh, paper towel with alcohol? Uh, I would use a Q-tip with alcohol, just so you can get into the nooks and crannies. It's not likely handling the model that you, you know the finger oils would get into the nooks and crannies of the model, but just to be on the safe side, yeah. Uh, also, you probably could also, with a soft toothbrush, you know, put them like in a uh, alcohol bath kind of thing. Um, dunk them, give them a little scrub down, let them dry. You know, and then go to town, right? Uh, but that's why, like, often when you're painting, affix your model to a handle so that you're not touching the model. And, like, this model is, like, perfect for my hand because, not that my hands are huge, but it's a good size, you know? And with this, with this handle, and I have a few of these made from resin, um, they're good for 40k models up to medium base sized models like for War Machine stuff and like uh, Terminator bases and you know the bigger bases. It's good for that. And then when I'm working on like the big heavy War Machine stuff, I flip it around and this is perfect for that size as well. I was actually toying with the idea of producing these. Toying with the idea. But I want to make a good and proper prototype for them and, and then you know, do some, but yeah. But yeah, hammer tea, that's about what I would do. Yeah, just a little bit of rubbing alcohol, Q-tip thing. Just make sure, you know, you don't leave any of the cotton on the model just because it'll, when you spray the model, you say, oh, I got some cotton on it, you know. Um, gets going through this chat. Man, I am way behind in this chat. Way behind. Mark Ilias, hey Chris, I got to take off, but one last question, if you don't mind, do you have any suggestions for making trees for terrain? I can't find any method I like that's both simple and effective. Well, I do have a video in the vault on making trees, kind of a wire wrap kind of thing, where you basically take wire, thin gauged wire, twist them, make your branches twist, you know, stuff like that, and then take a plaster bandage and wrap them like that. And then you can put flock or, you know, make big palm trees or, you know, what have you. Or you can go to, you know, like, floor shops and they'll sell, like, tufts of, like, you know, turf and stuff like that. And you slap it on. And it's really not that expensive. But, you know, getting getting your hand on the gauge wire can be. Uh, the, getting your hands on the plaster bandage can be. And getting the, uh, your flocking materials, you know, the um, lichen and stuff like that. But, yeah. Give that a try. Uh, Integral, get some opinions on my boy Racer Rhino. Oh, he sent a link. Okay, here we go. Here we go. And I'm going to put this over here so that we can all view his effort. Here we go. And this is Integral 069. This is his boy Racer. Now, I'm, I must be missing something because boy Racer must be in reference to something. But I'm not getting it. And let me just size this a bit here so we can see it more in its entirety. And there we go. So, yeah. That's uh, his boy racer conversion of a rhino. 
I I I, I don't get that though. Why is it, why is it a boy racer? What's boy racer? I'm I'm lost. <laughs> but very cool, very cool. Send me more. Send me more. More. Laughing God Trollolo. How the hell did you do that? Sopler. So, so, so piler? <laughs> Whoa. Um, Hammer T. Uh, one game with them before I finished painting. Besides, I came up with other things to add to the models. Very cool. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm lost in this chat. And I'm... Am I caught up in this chat? No, I'm not caught up. I'm still way behind. So I'm jumping ahead. I'm fast forwarding through this chat. Uh, Cody Roo, my request for a demo. A, call Owen and have him come into work. Have Owen sit down next to Chris. C, Chris, give Owen his New Year's beating. Year of the horse. Is it Year of the horse? For not bringing in coffee for Chris. You know what? That's a good idea. And somebody text, texted me on my phone. And I'll bet you... No, it's not Owen. It's my wife. <laughs> she wants to know how my show went. Because I was supposed to start at 12. <laughs> uh, where am I? Come on, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just racing through this stuff right now. Integral, I thought I'd do all the typical mods I see boy racers do in the UK Lambo Door Stance Tracks. Scooby Bonnet. Hood for the U.S. vent and a big spoiler. Wow, I don't know what any of that stuff is. I'm not into racing cars and stuff, so. <laughs> Lost, I am. <laughs> Sketh1, maybe next show, get all the chaos posted and share them with Chris and all you guys. Yeah. Yeah, please. Because uh, cause, like, I take a bit of time to, you know, prepare. Because, you know, when I have the picture-in-picture stuff, I you know, I got to do that ahead of time, right? At Chris at Mini Wargaming, that's right. Send it in. Send it in. Chris, bacon bubblegum. Bacon bubblegum. Hammer T, I'm a bit bummed. I have not seen any responses from Chris on email. Uh, Hammer T, what, what email? From Chris on email. I don't know. Did you, did you, you sent me an email, Hammer T? If you did, uh, re, uh, resend it to me. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Sketh, laughing, yo leaving, ah, uh, later. <laughs> what? <laughs> Quirk, copy, paste. I don't know what the heck's going on in here. I don't know. Color of the gods, gotta go, ladies and gents. Have a good one, and thanks for the great show, Chris. Take care. You take care, Gus. Uh, Hammer T, oh yeah. Why is this back on Twitch instead of YouTube? Uh, because YouTube was giving me, uh, trouble today. It was just pissing me right off, really. That's what it was. Uh, so hopefully, um, <laughs> yeah. harumph, harumph. Yeah, so hopefully next week I'm back on YouTube because, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Cody Roo. I See, I'm reading this message now from Cody Roo, and, like, man, that was, like, a while ago. That was, like, an hour ago I said that. So I'm going to fast forward some more. I'm just, I'm just looking for whatever says Chris, and it looks like a question. Uh, S.J. Wims, Chris, my name is pronounced with a sh sound, so it's pronounced like schwims, but I'll answer to anything, basically. <laughs> okay, well, schwims, schwims sounds a little easier to say. Schwims, schwims, schwim, 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 Cody Roo, Xbox as such are evil. Yes, they are. Evil, evil, evil. Laughing shark, troll, la, 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 rock and roll. Yeah, see, I'm way behind in this chat. Cody Roo, my son does both Xbox and rock and roll. I prefer the rock and roll. I've even offered to buy him an electric guitar and lessons. He won't take me up on it. Darn kids, I know. The, um, the Xbox and internet and all that has ruined children. Has ruined. There was, well, no, when I was growing up, there was no internet. Well, I mean, like, there was, but it was a very small and you know insignificant wasn't a factor in people's lives as it is today and it is destroying everybody's brains destroying mark my words <laughs> uh wow i can't even see the text is bright green next and next and nerf chris can you still answer my point can't wait what point 
Dex and nerf. Dex and nerf. Oh, for okay, wait, yeah, okay, I found what your question was. For Skaven, the reanimated Skaven with the dreaded 13 spell. I have just primed white and painted on a thongy hickey oxide. What? <laughs> what else can I do? You can well if you uh, painted it in the brass or the bronze, and you put that uh, that new yeah that hill exile something or other oxide on it, um, and if you wanted to bring that that metallic feeling back up, just take that base color you used the metallic the bronze if that's what you did use, and re dry brush or just take whatever color you you base coated in, and give it a quick dry brush a very light 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 dry brushing. Just to re-pick those edges out and, you know, yeah. Or using that oxide in a more controlled fashion. Just going for, like, the uh, the crevices and such on the model and going into the details. But, yeah. More control rather than just kind of slapping it right onto the whole surface. Because, yeah, it, it is a paint and it will just dull the entire metallic finish. If that's what you have done is put on a metallic finish. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I am skipping through more of this chat. That's Cody Rue talking to Sketh. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm not going to read it. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Combat Wombat. Do you know if Papa Smurf is handling all the train projects these days? I miss the quirky ones. Quirky ones with Dave and the girls. No, Papa Smurf, Papa Smurf will be doing, won't be doing any terrain tutorials at any point soon uh we've had those few terrain tutorials posted in the vault from uh what is it dream spirit and uh hugo from ichiban has done uh, a basing series and yeah i know for a while too for the terrain uh austin a while back was producing uh, a bunch of videos on terrain he created a whole bunch of really good videos on terrain um but yeah, as far as terrain project, because I, I guess you you might not be a vault member combat, but uh, yeah, like because they were getting the Papa Smurf ones were getting posted onto the YouTube channel, but uh, really it, it's it comes down to a question of like uh, how popular the video was on YouTube and how much effort and time it takes to create one of those projects, uh, like create one of the videos, and the cost is just kind of a little high on those ones. Uh, but yeah, so any videos from him anytime soon? Uh, I'm not in the foreseeable future. Oh, Mark Han, when I prime the Bones Reaper minis with plastic primer, they kind uh, turn out kind of sticky. What do you recommend, Chris or anyone? Uh, well, w what are you priming in, and why are they kind of sticky? Well, if 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 the paint feels sticky then it might be priming too heavy. Um, if that's the case, I don't know what primer you're using. The, uh, the, the next thing could be that the models uh, have mold release on them. But if it's happening to a whole bunch of your models, then it might be the way you're priming. It might be your primer. Uh, primers, if you're using a spray can, whatever, then you got to make sure you give that stuff huge shake and shake and shake and shake. And so, yeah. But, um, yeah, let me know what primer you're using to prime, because, yeah. Um, where am I? Laughing, God, or laughing shark, troll, -la -la -la. you say alcohol, but what alcohol? Spirits? Uh, no, because that one, that, not spirits, you just isopropyl, just like rubbing alcohol. Um, just find that in the drugstore, you know, just isopropyl alcohol. And that, that'll just kind of degrease the model. I would definitely recommend just using just a Q-tip, you know, little container of alcohol, and just plunking it, uh, plunking the Q-tip into the little container, and then just, you know, scrubbing the model with like that. If that's a huge concern, now, do it, going through that and really kind of uh, um, being cautious with the oils on your fingers on the model. Really, only do it if you're working on a display piece or something that you want to bring to a really high standard that you know you really need. You know, th that model to be really free of, of oils. If you're just doing it for rank and file type stuff, yeah, that's a lot of work. And might not be that necessary. Oftentimes, whenever I'm in getting into an assembling session, I 
will wash my hands thoroughly with soap and water beforehand. And if I find that I'm sweaty or I'm getting hot and stuff like that, then yeah, I'll continue to kind of just keep washing my hands just so that I keep them free of oils, dry. Uh, also, um, I'm not sure how well, but you know, like the, um, uh, the, the hand pump stuff, the hand sanitizer. What is that called? Come on. Anyway, that stuff. I usually kept that stuff nearby and it just kills the grease on your fingers, but yeah. I mean, you could take it to another extreme and wear gloves, but that's kind of extreme. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> um, I'm just skimming through the chat again. Skimming through the chat because we're all just talking about the Puppet Smurf stuff. Boy Racers, the drivers from the Fast and the Furious. Oh, that's what that's from. Okay, see, I don't watch. I watched the first Fast and the Furious movie. And I, you know, I wasn't impressed by it uh, because mainly it was it was like a redo of Point Break, the Keanu Reeves and uh, Gary Busey one. It was like uh, a redo of that one, and so I wasn't terribly impressed with it because I wasn't terribly impressed with Point Break either. But Point Break came out first. <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, num, 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 num. Integral 069 Boy Racer is probably the just a UK reference. Street Racer might be understood in the US. Yeah, okay. Street Racer. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, boy. What is it? Boy Racer? Yeah, I I didn't get that one. <laughs> uh, Quirk Quirky posted a little linky. <laughs> Crap, did I just do that? Oh, yeah, okay, here we go. And... I don't know what the heck I'm doing here. Hold on here, hold on here. Because... I don't know what the heck I'm looking at here. He's got a big, pinky, dark Eldar thingy. You know what, pink on dark Eldar? Oh, crap, what the heck? Oh man. Oh. Stupid chrome. <laughs> Stupid chrome. Oh, I give up. Anyway, that's pink dark Eldar thingy. Very cool. I like the scroll work on it, Dave. That's pretty cool. Needs more. More. <laughs> more. Um Am I getting caught up in this chat? Uh, uh, uh. I'm completely lost again. <laughs> uh, Hammer T, they're closing their mall locations. So the one near me closes on the 12th. Okay. Cody Rue, Hammer T, they're planning on opening all the strip malls or something like that. Chris at MiniWarGaming.com. Huh? Hammer T, oh, you guys are talking about GW closings, I guess. Laughing Shark Troll, -la 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 -la. I sent you an email, Chris. It's a towel for everyone to enjoy. Skeff, no towel. Uh, you know what? Uh, we're not biased against towel. Uh, there is no biased ism. Biased? No, racist? No, prejudice. There we go. Prejudice. There's no prejudice in way of the brush. <laughs> There's no exclusion. There we go. There's no exclusion. All are welcome. <laughs> you know what? Let's get to an email. Let's get to an email. This is from Zach Albert, Mixed Diver. I don't know. Eldar Mymira. He love watching your videos and have been a great help. I just got an airbrush over the holidays and decided it time to start a new army as well. The Eldar Mymira have always been my favorite since the Forge World books and just all the fluff. My problem, I can't find a good combination to get that classic blue-green glow look. I just want to use new Badger paints and was wondering if you could recommend some colors for me to try. I only have the base black, have the base and black at the moment for getting things going. Thanks for any help you can provide. If you're feeling really frisky, a video painting this color scheme would be amazing. There are zero out there. Thanks for your time, Zach. So, my my Mira, Eldar, my Mira. Um, 
yeah, they, they have this really turquoisey kind of look. And the way they do it in the book, I believe it's more like a solid turquoise. I know I've seen them where they have like a two-tone going from like a, kind of a green to a blue. GW does produce a turquoise. That's the uh, Temple Guard Blue, I believe. Temple Guard Blue. Use it all the time, right? I should know the name. Temple Guard Blue, I believe, is what it's called. And that one is a turquoise you can use for that. Uh, as far as using airbrush and airbrushing it, so if you're going to go with, say, Minotaur um, or Vallejo, they're turquoise colors. I can't think of what the name of the turquoise is. I don't have the Minotaur paints out here. I don't even have the airbrush out here. I keep it in my office, but anyway. You know what? I might have to do a video on that. That's a good call. Yeah, I think so. I think that's what we'll do. We'll do a video on that. And... Yeah. No, I already did that one. That was Kachiniwa. Yeah, I did that email. So, and Clayton was sending me these pictures for reference on the bug and yeah so i don't have to do that email wow i don't have to do that email <laughs> um <laughs> what the heck am i looking at here okay so let's go to another email and this one was just sent in half hour ago from irish knight 84 michael Anyway, sorry your email's post there, bud. <laughs> I can't. There we go. I got rid of it. <laughs> there we go. Anybody can just pause, go back, and get that email, but please don't. <laughs> Here is by far the most underwhelming candy known to man. Also, just got my Ritante primed on a cork base and getting ready to rock. Thank you for your vids and keep up the great work. Combat Wombat. Oh, this is Combat Wombat. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> and so here, let's... Oh! Stupid. 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 There we go. There we go. We're resizing it now. <laughs> and so it's Rathante. Yeah. My Rathante, though, Combat, I uh, drilled out that barrel just so it was a little deeper. Now, did you find the attaching the chains to be a big pain? Because I did. <laughs> a huge pain. What are you going to paint him? Are you going to paint him gold? Richante? Richante? It's just fun to say. And these are Krabby Patties. This is disturbing. This is what's wrong <laughs> with... This is what's wrong with America. <laughs> Um, okay, you guys are just watching me go through my emails. <laughs> Crap, I can't, can't get rid of these stupid email thingies. Anyway, here's another one from Will Ecken. Ekins, yeah. What's up, Chris? There's a few snapshots on my hammerheads. Red color scheme is a new scheme I'm working for. I personally think it is better than the green scheme. However, it is a bit bland. What do you think? Thanks. What do I think? Well, because you're priming on top of the black, right? So that's kind of one of your first issues. Let me just resize this up here. Oh, this thing just wants to fight with me. I just want to resize. That's all I want to do. <laughs> I like the green tanks. The green tanks look really good. I like the edging on them. But the red, yeah, the red, because you're, you're priming on top of... You're, you're painting it on top of black, and if you want a nice bright red, you got to go white. And I know a lot of people are big fans of priming black, but when you want to go bright colors, you have to go white. You have to prime white. Uh, another thing you could go, if you if you still wanted to stay with your, um, you know, your black primer, you could, where you're going to paint it white, you could also hit, or paint it uh, red. You could hit it with a white uh, prime or white paint like from a spray can, and hit it like that, and then paint it red. You know, you could do something like that. But otherwise, yeah, getting that uh, red brighter, yeah, you, you've got to, uh, you got to uh, apply it on top of white. Yeah. 
get or put many layers down um, I'm not sure what red that is you're using but a good one that sits on top of black primer really well is Mephiston red that sits on top of black very well and so it requires not that many uh, layers but yeah and definitely keep your paint thin it looks like you thinned it down a bit working but again yeah it's kind of frustrating right because you want to leave that black where the uh, looks like you have like exhaust going on like you know you're creating like the exhaust and stuff I assume I don't know I could be wrong but yeah and I can see it kind of here it looks like you know like the exhaust but you know you're better off creating that afterwards you want to you want to paint everything and then effects afterwards creating the effects during is just kind of um, you know, it's just kind of tricky, right? So, yeah. Let's back to this chat. Let's go back to this chat. I have no idea where anything is or what's going on. I'm just scanning through the chat. Sketh, crisp bubblegum, <laughs> bacon bubblegum, asparagus and chocolate bubblegum. Whoa, what? Chris, I'm joking about Tao. It is leftover chaos effects of the warp. Can't help it. Okay. Um, where am I? Oh, I don't know where I am in this chat. I'm just kind of scanning through real quick here. I'm just kind of seeing if we got any questions addressed. It seems like everybody's still talking about the GW closures, I guess. Hammer T. My son has finally stopped asking to cheat in our games of 40k. He had a hard time. When I would kill a new model of his, being dad, I'd let him cheat. Well, dad, don't let your son cheat at games. Kick him repeatedly in the pants in games. Either he will give it up, <laughs> or he will get so PO'd that he wants to beat you and defeat you, and you will drive him to succeed against adversity. And, yeah, like my son... We play War Machine, and you want to play, you want to play a competitive game with your children. Play War Machine with your kids. <laughs> you guys won't talk for a while. But Alex, yeah, my son, he uh, he repeatedly beats me at War Machine with because he plays Menoth. I play Merc, and then he's like, "Oh, I'm, you know, I'm super awesome." <laughs> we were actually thinking of doing a father son uh, kind of thing, uh, War Machine. Uh, we were gonna team up. Uh, against Owen and somebody probably Quark and uh, yeah have us play against them 2v2 kind of thing but yeah Hammer T I really dislike Steampucks so I will not play Warm Hearts oh well <laughs> <laughs> I know I wasn't really big into the Steampunk vibe either I just but I started playing because everybody around here plays it and I got into it and I like it. Uh, I it's really it, you know, War Machine. It it could be any kind of uh, it could be set in any kind of universe. It really, it's the game mechanics. the The game itself is fun to play. It is it's very concise on how things work and you know how how things are laid out. And so it's very it's very enjoyable to play. Um, Combat Wombat. Chris, the chains were pain in the butt. It would have bits of gold and troll blood base that my army shares. I will have to drill out the cannon now that you mentioned it. <laughs> yeah. What time are we at? What time did I start? What time did I start this? <laughs> I don't even know. I think it was closer to one, right? And so I've gone an hour and a half. Okay, yeah, there we go. Uh, Hammer T, my son kind of wavers on his desire to play 40k, so I kind of needed to go easy on Well, yeah, I mean, and if he's really young, then yeah. But, yeah, I wouldn't, because, you know, especially with games, you know, because children learn by playing, right? And, like, even in video games, um... I don't let them. I don't let them play and do glitches or you know, um, you know, pat stat, uh, pat their stats, stats or anything like that. I always you know make fun of them and you know like things like that. I don't let them cheat because 
the cheaters never win. And so, and children learn by games. Games should be fair. And yeah, unless I'm unless I'm wrong, I don't know, because yeah, you know. What do I know? I'm not I'm not the parenting expert here. <laughs> but I, you know what? I, but my kids are good, so I mean, you know, I think I might have done something right. I don't know. At least people tell me my kids are good. I never go home, they're a pain in the ass. Uh, <laughs> um, where am I? Laughing shark trollolo. It's blood red. Oh, okay, yeah, so it's a fairly bright red, yeah. I would I would go with Mephiston Red. Pick yourself up a little bit of Mephiston Red, and give it a try. Especially if you if you're adamant about keeping with a black primer, then yeah, try Mephiston Red. You still have to do a few coats of it, like two coats maybe. Thin it down, you know, the way I tell people to apply their base coats. <laughs> but if you really want it bright, you got to prime it white. Oh, hey, that rhymed. <laughs> Was any was anybody listening to that? <laughs> that, always, that always sounds like those, uh, you know, up with hope and down with dope. You want it bright, you prime it white. <laughs> I'm sorry, that, that's, that just struck me as funny. Maybe I'm delusional. I don't know. <laughs> oh, where am I in this chat? I am lost. Yeah, you created the yeah laughing or laughing yeah laughing shark. Yeah, you created the exhaust rusting and yeah, yeah yeah. But if you want it bright, prime it white. <laughs> oh man, you know it's a sad thing that nobody finds me as funny as I do. <laughs> Uh, uh, waffles forevers. His hair and beard, Como, Como, is amazing. Who's my hair and beard? Uh, is that what he's talking about? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still cracking myself up. Mustache. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. The mustache. Yeah, I was actually kind of toying over the holidays of cutting it, and well, I've already trimmed it once because it was the hairs were getting really long. But I don't know. It's almost kind of become like this whole identity thing, and you know, it's kind of like I don't own the mustache; the mustache owns me. So I don't know. Ah. <laughs> uh... Cody Roo, Hammer T, I am competitive, but I don't necessarily build overpowered lists. I play fluffy lists. But I do like to follow the rules. Still, I'm flexible if needed. Yeah. Well, yeah, in Hammer T, if, if your kid is really young, well, then, yeah, I mean, that's, that's you know, it's, you're still having fun, right? And you want to have fun. You want to play together. And, you know, you want to, you know, all that goodness. But, um... Yeah, if he's like 13, 14, 15, and you're letting him get away with cheating, I wouldn't. Kick him right in the pants. <laughs> Don't let him cheat. Don't let him think he can get away with cheating, because then it creates a very wishy-washy kind of moral compass on the person, right? <laughs> Unless, of course, he knows you're letting him cheat, but then how can that be fun, right? It's like in video games, you know, let, like doing the cheat codes and stuff like that. I, I give my kids crap. Doing cheat codes. Like, don't do the cheat codes. You can't play the game the way it's created. Then don't play the game. Then you can't play the game. You can't win, right? It takes more skill to win at something, playing by somebody else's rules, than going around and cheating to try and win, right? And then patting yourself on the back thinking, ha, 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 I use the cheat, <laughs> right? But you didn't really win. You cheated. You couldn't. You couldn't win. You couldn't overpower with your brain and win that game without cheating. That means that you are... <laughs> I don't want to say less, but <laughs> that's what it comes out sounding like. <laughs> so don't cheat. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, if, and if Hammer T, if the guy's not have, if he's not having fun, then maybe, you know, wargaming might not be his thing. I have to play the board game. Like I said, like the family gaming thing... 
you know, we get together, and my my little girl, she's not a, she's not really into 40k. She knows of the stuff, but she's not into it. And my wife as well, she's not into 40k at all. She's not into war gaming at all. She's, she's more into video gaming, but you know, but board games like Talisman. Oh yeah, she can tell you all sorts of stuff about the Talisman characters, and you know what I mean. But you know, and we've played that for years, years. Like my the wife and I, since we were crap, since we were in high school, we've played Talisman. I've been with my wife a long time, twenty some years, so. Yeah, since we were young. <laughs> Been a long time together. But anyway, this is not marriage counseling. <laughs> this is Way of the Brush. <laughs> uh, Sketh, now Chris is going to read a bunch of thank yous and welcomes and NP, LOL, going to be epic. What? <laughs> huh? I don't know. Laughing shark. Ha 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 ha. He'll get confused. Yes, I'm already confused. <laughs> Cody Roo, Sketh. I have a pair of videos up on Mini War Gaming site. Orcs versus Orcs against Jay. And the chat's moving on me and I lost my place. There it is. Orcs versus Chaos versus Dave at Valhalla. You'll see how competitive I am by watching those. Although against Jay, we didn't have sound for the first two four turns. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> Where he was doing that stupid voiceover thing. It was funny, but. You know. <laughs> Schwim, speaking of War Machine, Chris, I do have a gaming question. Is Horde's army viable against a War Machine army? I've been thinking... Uh, crap, I lost my face. There we go. I've been thinking about maybe getting into it. Actually, the Horde's armies fare a little better against War Machine. Now, the rules are very similar. Very, very similar. They're, they're interchangeable, like, almost. Hordes, although it's the uh, folk, it's the fury versus the focus. You know, there are two different kind of mechanics there, and really that's the only difference between the two games is the way the warcasters or yeah, the warcasters or warlocks work with their beasts or jacks. But otherwise, often war machine or war uh, hordes factions often fare better against war machine. For example. Um, like trolls. Trolls have guys who are five fury. You know, Scorn, I think, have a five fury monster as well. That's like five focus for a warjack. Whereas most warjacks, only if they're bonded, can they get to four. And that's only through special circumstance. Most of the time, you only get three focus. So that's only three extra little th things that you can do versus a horde's army or monster that can go up to like five. And so that's huge. That's a huge advantage. And so hordes, yeah, often against War Machine, they often have those kind of advantages. And often uh, a lot of War Machine armies, now they're kind of remedying it with a lot of, um, you know, up, uh, updates. But often uh, War Machine do not have anti animi type spells or uh, effects that will affect the animi because animi are different from the other spells. And so, yeah, if you're getting into hordes, get into hordes because it's they're lots of fun. You know, monsters. Everybody loves monsters. But yeah, um, where am I in my chat? Tandian. Hey, Chris. Know of any pre-painted fantasy terrain aside from Pegasus? Um, well, there's lots of terrain makers out there. You can buy some pre-made terrain. But as far as, like, just kind of store-bought type stuff, uh, Pegasus, I think that's it. No, there's somebody else. I know there's somebody else that produces, like, fantasy type stuff. I don't know. I can't think I can't think of it right now, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> Quirk911. Owen cheats and wins all the time. Yeah, Owen does cheat lots. I know, Quirk. I know. I, you're, yeah, you're preaching to the choir, dude. Sketh Cody Roo, I didn't get them. Had stuff distract me during the Halloween. Chris, how do you cure your wobbly bases on your Eldar hover tanks? Uh, like where the flying stem attaches to the tank. Often, because that little peg will snap all the time, often what I do is I just, with my hobby knife, I just kind of bore the hole out a little bit more. And because those flying stems are tapered, the, the tank will sit evenly but like for example the um the fire prisms because they're so back heavy and where that hole is often the tank sits uh 
back up and so you end up having to re-drill a hole further back because the center of gravity is is actually different right so yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's a few ways i keep hearing a sound somebody's here <laughs> i don't know but anyway yeah so that's often what i'll do for fixing the uh, wobbly tank um where am i in this chat cody rue they're up on the site and youtube okay Sketh, finally remember the question i need to ask chris cody Rue watched them all this week Oh, yeah, your, your hover question one, yeah. <laughs> hover question. <laughs> um, da -dum 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 -dum. Laughing shark, tra -la -la -la. calm down, Chris. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Chris the poet. <laughs> you know what? I do write poetry, actually. Sometimes. Cody Rue, Chris is hilarious in his own mind. I am. And you know what? <laughs> it's a shame... Like, nobody else finds me as funny as me. Like, really. <laughs> Cody Rue, Chris, grow your mustache long enough to do a comb over when you go bald. Man, I'm I'm Ojibwe. I'm Native American. Uh, we don't go bald. <laughs> Sketh, fishy cheating cheese. Jeez, Louise, you, you're like a tongue twister extraordinaire. Um, Cody Rue just teasing Chris You are very funny And we all laugh along You know what I don't even care if you're laughing with me Or at me I don't care As long as you laugh Right Because there's so much Garbage out there in this world That makes me Make us want to curl up Into a little ball And not go outside And yeah It's important we laugh It's important to laugh You have to laugh You have to This is Laughing is serious business Scat, Chris is Chris is you like beards you should check out scotch and smoke rings grow beard video sketch how dare you sir wow I read that almost as incoherently as that was was written uh, laughing shark troll -la -la, I had to cheat on the last mission of the tone it the, the ballad of gay Tony I just couldn't do it <laughs> yeah I think my my little girl my little girl she loves Grand Theft Auto I know and you're probably thinking really your little girl plays Grand Theft Auto but yeah she loves it I don't let her you know get too hilarious with it and she doesn't get that much time on it but she just drives around and does stuff and then she likes shopping for her character and <laughs> girl stuff <laughs> uh the combat wombat silently swears as he drills with Dante's can. <laughs> yeah, I know because it's pewter, right? It's drilling pewter's a pain. Especially if you don't have like a rotary tool and drilling into pewter. That's a huge pain. <laughs> uh, Chris, can you watch this video? No, I'm not. I'm not going to watch any videos. Why? Because that'd be really boring. You guys sitting here watching me. Um, Watch videos? That'd be boring. <laughs> Hammer T, we play Monopoly as a family. Yeah, Monopoly's lots of fun. And um, I'm a terrible winner at Monopoly. <laughs> and my little girl, she's a she's even worse winner at Monopoly. When she wins, oh man. When she has the upper hand on you, she she like like an eagle's talon, she grapps, grapples with you and does not let you go and will not let you squeak by under a dollar she, she's to the penny on you oh just evil little kid evil evil but lo but lo i love her <laughs> in that game versus jay chris would often come in and visit and how the game was going he even sang the cowardly long song during the game but it was lost due to the sound jay does a very humorous irish accent for us in the intro very silly yeah that one was pretty good yeah, the, uh, the Coward of the Lion song, I sing that one often. I just like coming into a room and singing that. <laughs> it just, it's, just, it's just about making an entrance, right? And so, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was going to skim through here. Laughing Shark Troll Lolo, Sellers of Catan. Never played that one. 
Um, let's get to an email because I'm lost in the chat again. I'm lost. And let's get to an email. I'm going to click this. Oh, okay. So, this is from Karukaru. Karuk? Karukaru? I know, I know you're in the chat here today, but um, Vladimir. I'm just going to call you Vlad because your online handle is just a nightmare to say. <laughs> and so, <laughs> that's, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm just going to see if I can get this resized properly so we can all enjoy the viewing goodness of it. Just give me a second here, folks. Folks, stay with me. Don't change the channel. <laughs> and so here's his rhino with the demon melded with the rhino. Looks very cool. I like this. This is very cool. I dig it, dude. It's awesome. I assume it's still a work in progress. And if it's not, I'm sorry. But I'm going to assume it's a work in progress, dude. It looks very good. I like that conversion, the demon. <laughs> it, it, like, it looks like you really wouldn't want to get in this rhino with this guy because he's going to drive you all over the place. <laughs> the skulls on it, very cool. Now, did you like get a bunch of skulls or did you recast some or and do that? Because that's a lot of skulls to go through. <laughs> but yeah, very cool. I dig it, dude. Keep sending me pictures, people. Keep sending me pictures. Very, very cool. And yeah, I think he is here. And, um, yeah. Karuk, Karuk, I don't know. Vladimir, I'm just calling you Vlad. <laughs> when I see that name, I'm just calling you Vlad, dude. Because <laughs> uh, your online handle is a nightmare to pronounce. <laughs> Cody Roo, hmm, just lost the video for a second. I don't know. Hopefully, I'm still on the air. 60 Needles, I have to go, you peep, you crazy people. It's beer time. It's almost Miller time. Punisher 1, Chris Warby's cost more points and have worse ba baseline stats compared to Warjack. As with the anti anime anything that stops spells being cast will stop the, an anime as an anime is still a spell. Really? I don't know if we've been playing it that way. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case, then, oh man, some people are going to be in trouble. Because I play a lot with Orn Midwinter, and he stops spells and magic abilities. And I always have to watch people, not naming names, Owen, but I have to watch people. <laughs> yeah. And Warbeast, yeah, like they have bit worse baseline stats. And, you know, but I mean, like, like for Circle, the, um, the Stalker, that thing is stupid. Four, is he Four Fury or Five Fury? I think he's a Four Fury. But he's got a, such a high defense, you know, and, you know, he, then he, he, you throw in the other wolves who up his, his strength and, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it requires more synergy in hordes versus War Machine where a Jack can, yeah, like without focus can just go up and kind of beat up stuff. So, yeah, there, there is differences, but it, it's also pretty well balanced, right? And that's really the beauty of, you know, uh, War Machine and Hordes is, like, it's a really good balanced kind of system for the most part. I mean, yeah, there is some inconsistencies, but not like 40K or Fantasy. Well, 40K, that's what Fantasy. I don't play a lot of Fantasy, so I can't really gripe about Fantasy. Schwims, thanks for the info, Chris. I'll probably pref prefer Hordes armies because I like the models more. Yeah. And that's the first, like, uh, Circle, if I was to start a Hordes army, well, I've already got minions, but if I was going to get into more Hordes, more Hordes, um, I would uh, go with Circle with the uh, big satyrs because the new sculpts for the satyrs are awesome. I love those new sculpts. I like the old sculpts too, but the new sculpts are really awesome. The satyrs, the big goats. I like the big goats. The goat, 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 boy. Uh, 60 Needles, by the way. Chris, play some fantasy, damn it. Damn it. <laughs> Scat Schwims, which army has those cool, dark, magic-looking dragons? That's Legion of Everblight. They have the dragons. They have the big colossal, or gargantuan 
dragon. That model's really cool. And their battle engine, too, is really cool. It's this big tower tentacle thing. It's just crazy. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's, fa- it's fabulous. Laughing shark troll. La, 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 la. Whoever asked the question about the fantasy train, look at Terrain Scapes on YouTube. And he has a site where you can buy stuff. He makes whatever you want, but rather expensive. Well, yeah, like, you know, you can go to, like, you know, Terrain Scapes. You can go to Greenleaf. You can go, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bill. Terrainaholic. There we go. <laughs> there we go. You know, and you can go to them and, you know, get your terrain. Um, like Terrainaholic, he does this really neat thing with foam. I don't know what his process is. I don't know if it's just a hot wire cutter or what, but, you know, creating pieces out of the foam. And he's got a really nice system where the pieces are all the same, and I'm not sure how he does it. I'm, I'm sure he has a video on how he does it, but, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, lost in the chat yet again. Crazy Rocket Jaw. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Crazy Rocket Jaw. What's a rocket jaw? Rocket jaw? Rocket jaw. <laughs> oh, cracking up time. I think it's cracking up time. What time are we at? We're at, it's 3 o'clock my time. And I've been on the air for... Have I been on for two hours? I started at one. Yeah, you guys got me for two hours. <laughs> it's 3 o'clock. It's two hours, people. I'm I'm done. I'm pulling the pin. I know there's no time limit on this, but yeah. I'm uh, just kind of quickly skimming through the chat here. And yeah. Um, um, I'm going to answer this one quick question here. He just posted, Crazy Rocket Jaw. Hey, Chris, what happens to those models you use in your quick tip videos? Well, for example, uh, the Space Marines that I've done for like various quick tips and uh, painting tutorials in the vault. Uh, Dave actually wants to use those in his... Um, 40k rejects because he's got big plans for his 40k rejects and he wants to really start pumping those back out so and i say i'm all for that because those videos are funny but yeah i think i'm done i'm done people i it's three o'clock and i'm pretty sure i started this just before one and you know i'm sure you're all really disappointed that i'm gonna stop right now but yeah i am I'm gonna stop. We didn't get to a demo, and I set the, I set the damn demo up. Look at, I had, I had everything set up here. I was ready to go. I was gonna show something. I didn't know what, but you know what? We'll figure out something next time, right? Okay. So, for next week's show, I should be back on YouTube. If not, we'll probably do this again. Uh, although I'm not really quite fond of this chat in here. And if for those of you watching this on YouTube. I should be on YouTube. Scat <laughs> demo time? No. Nice try, buddy. And yeah, so send those questions and comments. Send me pictures of what you're working on. Send me you want to show something off. You want a little bit you want maybe a little bit of uh, exposure for your channel. Whatever. Like, you know, I I'll support anybody who's painting and hobby in this hobby and you know. Hey. Yeah, we're all we're all here to help each other, right? And so, yeah, I think I'm done. Combat wombat, um, the uh, go grab a, a bubba. Yeah, I I am gonna do just that. <laughs> so I will see you guys next week. It should be on YouTube, short of any kind of clustering of coitus. <laughs> Take care of your brushes. They'll take care of you. And I will see you guys next week in the next show. Send me those emails. Just, but don't spam me though. But I'll see you guys later. You guys have a good one. It's a new year. New thing. I still got to create an intro. And Pony Pledge. I don't know where my buddy Pony Pledge was today. Uh, I don't know. I feel bad. I'm going to probably go cry into my... Wobbly pop. (laughs) See ya.